Hello friends, today we will continue considering the life of the Swiss reformer Ulrich Zwingli as we go further into our study of the wonderful book The Great Controversy by Ellen White. You see, Zwingli was a strong supporter of the Word of God, and although he and Martin Luther never had contact with each other, they had come to the same biblical conclusions and were preaching the same gospel. In the year 1516, Zwingli became the preacher at Einsiedeln, a place known for its shrine to the Virgin Mary. Every year, pilgrims came to the shrine with the promise of receiving a complete remission of their sins. Zwingli preached vigorously against this practice, stating, Whatever be the country in which you dwell, God is around you and hears you. To many, this message was unwelcome, but others were delighted to hear of redemption through Christ alone. The truth was carried by word of mouth across the country, and soon the number of pilgrims greatly decreased, along with it their monetary offerings. The church authorities were dismayed, but yet they still hoped to win the eloquent Zwingli fully to their cause. After three years, Zwingli was invited to be the preacher at the cathedral in Zurich, which at the time was the most important town of the Swiss Confederacy. It was a place where he would have wide influence. He began his ministry there by opening the Gospels, reading and explaining the life, teachings, and death of Christ. We are told he presented the Word of God as the only infallible authority and the death of Christ as the only complete sacrifice. Many people of all classes flocked to hear him, but the monks set themselves to hinder his work and condemn his teachings. As Luther's teachings were advancing in Germany and beyond, and Zwingli's teachings in Switzerland, the sale of indulgences was being pushed by Rome. Every sin had its price, and men were granted free license for crime if the treasury of the church was kept well filled. Thus the two movements advanced, one offering forgiveness of sin for money, the other forgiveness through Christ. Zwingli preached zealously against the selling of indulgences, and soon the friars attempting to sell them had to leave Switzerland. Such was the effect of Zwingli's preaching. In the year 1519, a terrible plague known as the Great Death was sweeping across Europe, including Switzerland. Zwingli became very ill, but the Lord raised him up, and he was again to preach with power. He continued studying God's Word and arrived at a clearer understanding of its truths and had more fully experienced in himself its renewing power. The fall of man and the plan of redemption were the subjects upon which he dwelt. He clearly taught that men are not, because of the grace of Christ, free to continue in sin. Wherever there is faith in God, there God is is, he preached, and wherever God abideth, there a zeal exists, urging and impelling men to good works. Repeated attacks were made on Zwingli by the established church, and yet their efforts only furthered the cause of truth. At last, the church authorities decided to hold a council in the city of Baden, where Zwingli would present his views, and some of the church's most able scholars would refute him. The authorities rested assured they would win, as they not only chose the place of the combat, but the judges who would decide between the two. They believed that if they could once get Zwingli into their power, they would be careful not to allow him to escape as Luther did. Knowing the history of what had been attempted against Luther and fearing for the safety of their pastor, the Council of Zurich forbade Zwingli from attending this meeting in person. Instead, two godly men, Ocolampadius and Haller, were chosen to represent the reformers while the famous Dr. Eck 
supported by a host of learned doctors and prelates, was the champion of Rome. Although Zwingli was not there in person, a student who was in attendance took very careful notes of the arguments presented, and each evening these notes were secretly carried to Zwingli, who was able to review them and provide counsel and suggestions in writing. These letters were secretly carried back to the two men representing him, who were then able to present the biblical answers to the arguments leveled against them the following day. In the Great Controversy, the scene of the conference is described very clearly. Eck haughtily ascended a pulpit splendidly decorated, while the humble Oculampadius, meanly clothed, was forced to take his seat in front of his opponent on a rudely carved stool. The contrast between the two was striking. Eck speaking in a proud voice, expounding on the traditions of the church, while Oculampadius stated, I acknowledge no other standard of judgment than the word of God. The discussion continued for 18 days. At its close, the papists, with great confidence, claimed the victory. Nevertheless, the fruits showed the real results. The contest became a strong impetus for the Reformation. And not long afterward, the important cities of Bern and Basel declared they were on the side of the Reformation. You see, friends, in the end, God's truth always wins. No matter how present circumstances appear, we can rest assured that God's Word is trustworthy and true. It reveals to us the truth about God and His way of salvation. I invite you to pray with me just now. Thank you, Father, for the trustworthiness of your Word your instructions, your guidance. We can count on them completely and fully, without reservation. We thank you that you helped in this great debate that took place to bring Bible truth to the front so that people could clearly see what was simply humanly instigated as opposed to heavenly inspired. Help us to read your word, to ponder your word, to share your word, and to proclaim your word with Holy Spirit power, just as the Reformers did. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen.